Hey, Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop here. And for this Gaslands build, I'm going to take this original sheriff's car from 82, um, and I'm going to convert this uh, as quickly as I can. That's kind of the goal. I mean, the car has already beat the shit. So I'm going to cut the glass. I'm going to leave the, the uh, top part. I'm going to fade this out a little bit more with a wire brush and add some armor. I'm going to add some some wheels off of a matchbox car i'm going to add a scoop that i got from ken um, from the facebook gaslands page and i'm going to add either some weapons from that or this machine gun and i'm not quite sure what i'm doing or how i'm going to do it but that's what i'm going to do um, i've already drilled it to take it apart uh, the interior is already pretty beat i'm leaving it as is this looks like it was submerged in mud. I'm going to quickly wipe it down and just cut the windshield and the back window and leave the top part. Yeah, and pretty much what I'm going to do now is I'm going to narrate through 90% of this because, um, you know, I just found it kind of awkward trying to, to, to do it the other way. So here I'm cutting, attempting to cut the windshield to just pretty much leave enough meat so that I can use the, <clears throat> excuse me, use the the top light bar. Um, there's probably better ways to do things, as is 99% of what I'm going to pretty much narrate for you now. Um, you know, a knife probably would work better, but I like to wrestle with shit and make things difficult, so I decided to use a dull pair of clippers. Um, wear eyeglasses, safety protection, because the shit does fly. Um, I have to wear it because <laughs> I can't see shit up close. But here what I'm doing is I'm just going to take a very soft bristle steel brush on my Dremel tool. And, you know, the body's already pretty pretty beat, which is why I picked it. But the brush will just dull out the paint. Um, you know, I'm not trying to strip the paint any more than it's already chipped. But I'm just trying to get a dull finish all across the entire thing. So that's pretty much what I'm doing here. And, you know, maybe a little bit stripping around the, the wheel wells, and that's probably about it. Um, as far as taking the axles off, um, there's a couple different ways to do it. The Right now, it's like a deburring tool. I kind of take away the bulk of the product here. And if you're not going to reuse the wheels, then you can use a grinding disc, like I'm going to do it here, and just kind of grind away just enough so you can get to the bottom of the, the where they are at the top of the shaft <coughs> excuse me and that works pretty well plus it'll open up the groove enough usually to um, allow whatever you're going to put in there if you're going to reuse it but since i'm putting these on the bottom it doesn't really matter i'm just trying to get these out at this point um, there's a lot of different ways to do it again if you're trying to salvage things um, I kind of debated at this point whether to put them on the top or on the bottom um, to give it a little bit of a rake. Um, but based on the size of the wheels, and these are from a matchbox car, um, it just it was too too close and it didn't really give it that aggressive rake that I was looking for. So I opted to go on the bottom. To go on the bottom, you're going to have to create a groove. Um, so again, I use my cutoff wheel and um, just notch out enough usually about the width of your wheel itself to fit the existing axle which i didn't have to cut so that worked out pretty good um, and if there's any any bumps or anything on the bottom like this one I had the differential on the back i had to grind all the way across that not just the the two ends like i can kind of do on the front so i was pretty happy with this it gave me Give me what I was looking for. Um, so obviously I'm going to do the same thing on the front. Try to go a little bit deeper, a little further down, so it gave it a little bit of a stance. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I did I did cut these axles because they were too long and they stuck out too far. 
So here I'm just kind of mocking it up just to see, you know, again, a lot of this is guesswork. I just kind of go by what looks good. Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm miserably wrong. Um, but yeah, the axles were, were a little too long. Um, so what I try to do is I'll cut them in the middle and that way I'm able to use the ends that kind of hold the wheel onto the axle. Again, make sure you cover it with your hand, otherwise it's going to go flying, you'll never find it. Um, I use a piece of brass tubing and this allows me to take each half and put it in and then I can just crimp the ends. Um, again, there's 8,000 ways. I've got material to make new axles if I wanted to, um, some thin rod. But I felt that using the brass rod would also give it a little bit of a, a lift. So I just kind of quickly mark it. I'll cut it with my cutoff wheel. And then I'll grind the end just to, you know, smooth it out a little bit. But, you know, again, there's a thousand ways to do this. I decided to go with the brass, um, mainly because it also gives it a little bit of a lift. But to do that now, I've got to widen my notches to fit the extra diameter of the of the brass rod uh, same thing front and back just to make it so that it it sits in there and kind of almost snaps in um, it takes a little trial and error um, just to get the right you know you don't want one side to be higher than the other because then it's going to sit all cockeyed and shit and it's going to look horrible um, but you know it takes a little bit of a little bit of practice like i said i went a little bit um deeper on the front just to give it a slight rake it's not much it's probably not noticeable to anybody but me um, so as you can see it took me a couple times here to to get it and obviously everything's in fast motion i don't work that fast <laughs> um, but same thing you know put it on there get a rough idea mark it cut it and you know at this point if you wanted your wheels to stick out further or in further you can you can make modifications to the brass tubing just make sure you cut your axles um, so that both sides fit in and it's not, you know, hitting each other and pushing one out when you push the other one in. Um, that's what I'm doing here is just trying to make sure I have just enough sticking in. And then I just give it a quick crimp. Don't over crimp it because it'll bend the shit out of the brass. Um, again, there's better ways of doing this. Um, you could technically, you could glue it in if you wanted to. Um, as long as the glue doesn't seep to the wheels. Um, and in a gas lands car, it doesn't really matter because you don't want your car to move. Um, I'm just, I always like to glue my wheels at the end um, just because I like them to roll. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> um, here I'm just going to take that same wire, soft wire brush. And it, this is not hard at all. Um, the bristles are very soft. So even if you end up hitting your hand, it's not, not going to hurt you. I'm just kind of polishing up the, um, the grill and the back bumper. Here, I want something sticking out of the hood, so I get some um, scoops from Ken on the ca uh, Gaslands page. So I took one that I thought looked the best. I'm going to you know, try to mount that on there um, just to make it, you know, just to have some sort of an aggressive stance. Here, I'm just going to glue the, uh, the front and the back wheels onto the chassis. Um, the chassis is pretty beat. I really didn't do anything. Later on, I end up flat blacking it just to add a little, little to it because the brass sticks out like a sore thumb. Uh, so I wanted it semi-uniform. Um, nothing fancy. Also glue in the um, the light bar in. You know, pretty, pretty, pretty basic shit. I'm not going crazy on this car. Uh, this was supposed to be after my last project, which took me two weeks. I wanted to be able to do this in a short amount of time. Um, I think I accomplished that, even though it took me a few days. Here, I'm going to take and I wanted to make some armor for the windows, uh, mainly the back and the sides. Uh, I did put one strip on the front after I put the I put some steel mesh, which you'll see in a second. Um, here, I just kind of get a rough idea then I just kind of trim to fit um, it's not a perfect way to do things I'm sure there's a better way but um, it's not supposed to look perfect on a gas lands car so I pretty much take these I mock them up the best I can I'll paint them flat black uh, for the back one I ended up wanted a little bit of a notch like if a gunner could stick out and point a gun out the back window like if they were sitting in the back seat so I just drilled a few holes and then I filed it flat. Um, again, there's other ways to do it, but for me, for what I, 
what I was trying to accomplish with this. This worked out fine. Just a flat file. You can pick this shit up at Harbor Freight for pennies on the dollar. Um, here's the mesh I used, which was a fiberglass. Like if you're going to work on a, a hot rod, uh, like a Corvette or anything like that, the fiberglass mesh that comes with those kits. Um, that's all I'm using. It's a little stiff. I'm going to probably start looking for some different other kinds of mesh. This stuff works good, and it looks realistic, but it's a, it sucks to work with. It's just very stiff and hard to, that's what she said, <laughs> to work with. So once I got it in there, I also put a strip across the, the front, up top. Nothing fancy. Got the hood scoop glued on. Um, I got a gun out of some sort of, I don't know, ghetto Amazon Lego wannabe kit. I don't know where I got it, but... Um, it's got a little tab on the bottom, so I figured I'd use to keep it secure. I always worry about shit falling off, so I just put a use my quick punch, marked the hole in the center of the zero for the one, uh, 701, and I drilled a pilot hole and then a regular size hole, which on the video that bit looks huge, but it's the right size. <coughs> and pretty much just take that tab, put a little glue on it, a little glue in the hole. And the gun will fit right on there. Now it's painting time. Um, again, I didn't go crazy. I took some uh, Citadel Paints Lead Belcher, painted the hood scoop, painted the, the gun barrel itself. Um, I like this paint because it's just got a really nice finish to it. It looks uh, very illumina illumine. Let's go with that. Uh, I got some paint pens. Um, I did inside the scoop for the butterflies. Uh, nothing, nothing crazy. I could, I could do this with paint too, but paint pens for what I'm doing with this project was more than fine. I painted the uh, the lights on the top, you know, like spotlights, and then the headlights themselves. Uh, just to add a little bit of, little bit of detail, I, I don't go crazy with, with a lot of these. Uh, I like to be able to see the car. Uh, and I took that same lead belcher paint and I dry brushed um, on top of all the uh, armor plating just to kind of give it that washed out aluminum look but it's been kind of painted black I don't know really what the hell it is but it looked good and it's hard to tell on the video but definitely came out much better um, than just the plain, the plain flat black look um, I lost part of the video but I did go over everything with a little bit of Agrath Earthshade which is like a tint um, kind of gives it a little bit more of a brownish tint so anything that had rusted out or chipped spots on the original paint I use that I uh, just to give it a little bit of a brown tint and this looks yellow like mustard but it's not it's just the color of the I don't know why this is uh, Zandri dust another Citadel paint and this stuff if you dry brush it on there it really really looks good I I don't know why it looks like mustard <laughs> to be honest with you on the, on the video but in person it looks like it's definitely a sandy sandish color and God, yeah, it looks like mustard, <laughs> but it's not. It, it really looks good, so I just go over the whole car, mainly the spots that when you, you'd probably get a lot of mud and, and dirt build up uh, behind the wheels, and then a little bit in the wheel wells, and obviously the wheels, um, any place that looks like it needs it. And then I did all the uh, armor plating as well, and it kind of gave it a little bit of a, a bronzy tint to it, which is nice. It actually came out really good. I'm going to try it again on a different project, but... Essentially, that that was it, and uh, I took some some uh, black wash just to do the grill. Again, Citadel paints. I really love these things. Um, they have a lot of uses, and you can get kind of creative with them. And I did the gun barrel as well, but mainly just the tip because I had already done it in the uh, earth shade, so it had a brown. And then, like if it was fired a lot, I kind of added a lot of black tint to the back, um, like it was worn out. So it came out really good. Um, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, this is the first time I've had to kind of narrate a tutorial, um, and it came out pretty good, so hopefully you guys like it, and make sure you subscribe or like the video, comment if you got any questions, or you want me to see me do something else. Um, that's it. Thank you.